Everybody, today I want to do a recording showing the masking tools in Photoshop. So sometimes you got some art and it's not clipped out correctly. So this is a module that I'm, I'm using as part of my D&D campaign uh, called Call from the Deep. Uh, I got it off the DMs Guild. It's got a lot of stuff in it. And, and along with it came a download for some of the art assets that are in it, but not all of it. So I want to be able to use some of the art in here as tokens for my game. Uh, so I'm going to go in and... Uh, show how to do a non-destructive Photoshop technique uh, to to sort of clip out uh, some of the art assets that are in this book. So I gotta go and find the Sahagwan Raider. There it is. There's an image of it right here, and I want to use this as a token. That's pretty close to isometric. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty close. So I I can go and get to a 100% of the size of this thing, and just take a screenshot because that'll be the same quality. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go over to Photoshop, hit new, and create a new image that is, uh, you know, this Sahagwan Raider. So you'll see that there's a background and then there's the layer. So when you first start working with Photoshop, you're tempted to just take out the eraser tool and just kind of erase the stuff around here. The, the danger, though, is that if you get close or just kind of you lose information, because uh, once you delete those pixels, they're gone. So instead of doing that, we're going to use a feature of Photoshop called masking. So every layer can have a mask. So that's this button down in the bottom right-hand corner here. And you see it starts in the, the, the mask image is white. And you can paint on that mask image with anything between white and black. It's the alpha channel of, the, of that layer. So you have a different alpha channel per layer. And that way you can mask out an area. And if you want that back, all you got to do is paint and paint to white and it will come back. So you haven't actually deleted the red, green and blue channels. You've only deleted, uh, you've only painted on to a fourth channel, which is the alpha channel. So you can actually see the channel separated out. If you go into this channels area over here, you can see that RGB is turned on by default, but you can turn on the layer mask, which is the alpha channel. And you can see the actual act of painting in here. So as you're masking, if you're just having trouble visualizing, you can just leave it turned on, right? And then you'll be able you'll be able to see what's going on there as you're masking stuff out. So you, you can actually go and um, you know be be uh, you know working with the uh, alpha channel at the same time. You know, let's go and delete this layer mask and go back to right where we were we were. So I can create the layer mask from a selection. So I use the magic wand tool to kind of select all the stuff that's the same color. Let's see, I got that, some of the blue, just kind of select some of the area around here. And that's gonna get a pretty close mask. I'm probably gonna have some edits to do around the, kind of some of the detail that I'll be losing around the edges here. But with this selected, if I invert the selection, so I kind of, uh, I think it's, uh, Command Shift I. So I invert the selection. Now I'm selecting not the background, but everything but the background. And then I hit the mask button. I'm going to create, and you can see it's in the it's in, in the channel. It created an alpha channel that is the black for everything that's not the Sahagwan, and uh, white for everything that is the Sahagwan. And I can show it. And now I can go and paint in uh, with the brush tool extra black to get rid of these letters. Well, oh, that brush is a little too soft. Let's go make it hard so that I'm not going to bleed into the image. All right, so now I can see in this layer, I can also see that I'm losing, I think I'm losing some of the, some of the information that's here. So I'm going to take a much smaller brush, really small, turn the hardness up. I'm going to paint in some white, way smaller, like one or two pixels. Seriously smaller, two pixels. No, not W pixels, two pixels. I can take a two pixel brush, just kind of paint back some of the edges that I'm worried about losing here. And then I can go and do some really fine detail work on things that I really want to stay high quality. So like these little, little frills right here, maybe I want to clean those up. So now if I turn off this alpha mask, go to the layers, I can take this background and just create a solid color on the background and when it gives me a color picker so I can set the cellar solid color to something that will really stand out so I can see the white shining past and around the edges here that white's going to show up in front of other backgrounds in my tabletop tool so I don't want that extra white there I want to get rid of that so 
So now I can go and go to the mask. If I just click on the mask, no, click on the mask, then I'm editing the mask. Edit an image, editing the mask. If I click on the mask and then set it to black, I can kind of get rid of the white by just taking this brush really carefully, getting rid of the white here, looking around for any places where I still have the background bleeding through too much. Right, as a way to make sure that they don't like look like shiny bits or white highlights if this uh, Sahagwen is running around a brightly lit scene. I can kind of go and check the quality of the edge. This is looking pretty good. Right, a couple, couple blemishes down here that I want to get rid of maybe. But I can kind of go and check out the quality of this. And because it was in, fr in front of such a clean background, this is going to be good. All right, so now uh, I don't need that. Here's here he is, and all and kind of isolated. But you notice how like samey samey like the the tone is. Um, the basically there isn't a lot of contrast in the different. He he won't really show up as different. Uh, I, I, he'll just kind of look like a a brown mass here because he's kind of washed out. So now I can maybe take the color here and mess with it using Photoshop filters. So I can go to the image and the adjustments and go to brightness and contrast and see if that helps at all. So maybe I want him to be brighter so that he shows up better and then turn up the contrast a bit, right? And he's a little too red now, but that's okay. I can mess with that later. So now I can go to the image and go, uh, well, you know, the, the problem with that is I change the pixels directly. So I'm going to undo that. It's like, yeah, it's in this color thing. So I can do a brightness and contrast modifier, and then it shows up up here. So now this will affect the layer below it. Here. I can do another one for hue and saturation because I want to tone down the saturation on that magenta. Like maybe instead of getting the mester, I'm going to take the magentas only and then desaturate the magentas. Does that work? Doesn't really work, does it? All right, let me uh, preset master. We take the reds. Just want to desaturate the magentas a bit. See if I can get the blues. Super saturate the blues a bit. Does that work? The magentas. Yeah, so I can kind of get an interesting view on this guy and just kind of like color tweak him a bit. And now, um, the nice part about this is that all of the original pixels are there. So I can turn on and turn off these various layers if I, if I ended up not liking them. Uh, equally, I can um, I should be able to disable the layer mask. And so the original image is still here. If I ever wanted to change something, I could enable the layer mask. But now I've got this guy here. So now I can... Uh, taking this image, just kind of save as, and uh, I can go into my tokens area before I save things, All right? And I can go and grab, uh, make them a PNG file, and grab, uh, you know, Saha Saha Gwyn Raider. I think I've already got one. Sahagwin Magenta, Sahagwin Raider. Save it as a PNG file. And I'll, I'll notice that it's a, uh, there's the, hit save. And I've got the image size up. All right, this is 600 pixels by 700 pixels. I mean, that's a lot for a token. Um, so I might wanna shrink that down by 50% or something, because I'm really not gonna notice all of those details. So let's go percent and shrink it down to 50%. You know, every, you know, uh, you know, so it's going from 1.3 megs to 300 K of information. Every megabyte you save is a, a, is just that much snappier that you're making the whole experience for your players. So there he is, he's way more pixelated, but that's okay. Um, you know, I, one thing, since he's kind of dark, another thing I might do is I might put a blending option on him to kind of give him a, a border. Uh, some people like doing this, so I could do a, uh, a drop shadow or an outer glow, right? Turn on, 
I could do here and give him like a white border there by giving him an outer glow and giving it some, some spread or some size on the outer glow. And that'll help him stand out from a dark background. Sometimes if you've got a dark mini and you're using really spooky dark backgrounds, it can be hard to see them. So you just kind of pick a color. I mean, it doesn't have to be white. You can kind of just pick a color to have them stand out a little bit. It gives them a little bit more of a cartoony look, but it works fine. So let's try that. I'm going to save. I'm going to save as the Sahagwan Raider dash small. And we'll see the, dim the difference in quality when I bring it into uh, Foundry. So the Sahagwans that I drew myself, and I needed an alternate one, so I created this magenta Sahagwan. Um, but let's go and import the Sahagwans that I just messed with. So I'm going to kind of copy the Sahagwan Raider a few times, let's make an alternate version of them. The token, and I can go to its uh, image. And in my compendium, I got a whole folder of my Watsi rips. I can go to the Sahagwan, I can go to the Raider, select the file, update the token. There's the Raider. But now I can, let's just uh, quickly, ooh, it looks like I got a little line on the bottom of that. I didn't quite mask out the bottom line, so I'm going to have to go fix that. Um, so I can go to the token image. All right, so this one's using a different image. It's using the small image to half the resolution. But I think you'll notice that at this distance, you can't really tell the quality difference. Oh, the black line looks, looks. So here we go. Um, I've got the pirate ship that they're all traveling around on, and I've got some pirates up in the sails. This is this is a friendly pirate boat. So it's about to get attacked by Sahagwan, and I had a whole bunch of them ready to go like this, um, but you know we can get it moody really quick. So I'm going to go and I've got some pre-recorded um, you know, rain uh, macros that are going to uh, maybe and I can go and. Uh, say it's raining at sea, more fog, more rain, and I'm going to go in, I'm going to give this whole scene a tint so that it's like it's stormy out, right, and kind of tint everything blue, and that makes it dark and maybe a little trickier to see some of the darker minis. Uh, but if I go into my uh, actors and I go for Sahagwan, Sahag, come on, how do you spell Sahagwan? Sahuagin, great. Uh, well, we can have a debate on how to pronounce that, but you can use the one that I drew myself, or we can use the magenta one, or we can use this one here, which actually you can see through that border uh, looks pretty good. And this one's this one's still low resolution, but I think it looks great. Big old scary fish man, uh, you know, moving here uh, that stands out pretty well against the the scene. Uh, and you can actually, you can see all the detail because I messed with the contrast. You can actually see the detail better than the stuff that I drew, um, knowing that it was going to be cartoony. So maybe I should take them some tips from that. All right. Well, there we go. We've got some a new monster you know, ripped from art that I have in a PDF that I bought uh, for me to use in my own game for personal use. And that's how I grab it uh, without messing with any of the... Uh, you know, uh, pixels themselves, just kind of modifying them with a non-destructive technique of using masking and using uh, some Photoshop filters that aren't actually uh, augmenting the pixels that are being used as sort of, uh, you know, adjustment layers uh, and, and uh, allowing me to kind of figure stuff out as I go and being able to go back and change my mind if I don't like it. All right. Thanks, everybody.